Okay, looks like it's time to reassemble this hydraulic pump. I decided to go with the main body and a lot of the parts off of the parts tractor pump because the one on my tractor was pretty wore out in several spots. Um, we pointed out a lot of that in the previous video, but I'll talk about some as we get to that section in assembly. We got all our parts here, our bits and pieces. Um, I'll kind of describe what I did to refurbish any of them I had to clean up as we go to install. But it should be pretty straightforward. Start with making a little bit of room here. Okay, this is the top. These will be your discharge valves. Inlet valves are on the bottom. Uh, something I noticed on this one is we have a serial number, B28054. My tractor did not have a serial number there. I don't know if that means it was replaced at some point and it was a replacement unit or not, but this one does have a number. First thing we're going to do is install the inlet valves on the bottom side. And that would be these. There's a check ball inside of there and a pin that holds it. They mount upright like this, so there is no spring holding the check ball. It's all gravity. Fluid enters the ports on the side and pushes the ball upwards and flows up out to the pump because normally these go right in the bottom. There is a depth setting on these. This is your inlet port. And these, it looks like I shook the camera there. And these ports have to line up with this inlet port, but off to the side down here. Um, also, if you tap this in too deep, it's going to interfere with the piston and spring. So the shop manual tells you to insert it just shy of the piston and spring. And when, when I'm looking in there with a flashlight, I can see. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see it with the camera. Let's see. We'll try. And you can see in there. You can see that hole pass through. So basically, we're going to look in there and stop before it goes too deep. Let my forgot to get some assembly lube ready. I'm just using some of this engine assembly lube, but many of it's going to work. But I wanted to be able to use a brush. Get down into the port here. Probably help it slide in a little better. Right. I'm not sure how easy this is going to go in. We'll find out. So what I'm doing here is I'm inserting this screw, which was normally used to remove it, to pull it out. So I'm just going to tap on the screw itself and see if it slides easily or not. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. If I end up going too deep, I'll just have to use a screw to pull it out a little further. It's getting close now. All right, this is really close.
wonder if this bottoms out or not. Just curious, there's no seal on this yet, but I want to. Kind of tighten down there a tad early. Hmm. Uh, it looks like the threads on it are boogered up. Might need to grab one off the other pump real quick. Yeah, so it just makes contact. That might be the right depth once we tighten this down. No, it doesn't. Must have bottomed out in the threads. Okay. So this is about the right depth here. Looking inside. Probably not going to be able to see that, but it's just starting to reach the edge. Go ahead and do the next one. All right, perfect. There's how those are supposed to see. Next step, a couple copper washers. And I almost forgot, and I have to replace this bolt real quick. The are tore up there. Okay, had to go bead blast this one real quick and clean it up. These will, all this will get painted. I just didn't want to mar the paint up installing it. Okay, just in case to make it easier to remove. Put a little bit on the threads. So I will actually torque these down later. I'll clamp this in a vise so I can actually do it without knocking everything off the table. Okay. Next up, we will do our discharge valves. Discharge valves are a little bit easier. The seats are already installed. <clears throat> so literally, it's just a matter of installing the ball, the spring, and the cap. The way this is set up, you'll have this assembly and spring presses the check ball against the seat. I yeah, just put some grease on stuff so it doesn't rust up. Put 
put our copper ceiling washers on here. Same as the other side, I'll torque these another time. Okay, suction valves, discharge valves, they're in. Next, I want to install the seal for this shaft. This mounts here. This is the only seal we'll be replacing in the pump. Now, I was able to match the seal up by size, so I measured the shaft, measured the bore, and went on the National Seals website, and I was able to type this in, and it gave me some part numbers. Got this at AutoZone. I don't know, actually, advanced auto parts, but uh, I don't know if they all stock it or not, but it's National Oil Seal part number 471466. <clears throat> Already test fit it. If it's a shaft, perfect. Could fit the bore nice. So I'll use the back side of the socket to seat it. Knocking stuff over on the table. There we go. Okay, that should be sealed better than it ever was. All right, next up, we have a pressure relief valve. So inside of this port here, this port and this port are where the hydraulic lines attach. So that's the outlet. There's also another outlet here. You can see it has a little hole, pinhole there. Well, that is a seat for pressure relief valve. The valve is actually on the other side. It goes through the bottom here. And what that looks like is these parts here. Got a you got a spring, it's pretty stout spring. And you got a cup it sits in. And the ball rides there. And it presses it against that. And now it also is controlled by this valve assembly. And when you go to raise it, you're pressing this up tight against the, the seal and sealing off the port. When you go to let it down, it's going to rotate down and let, and let this open the valve. Okay, so let's see if we can get a little grease down in there. See if this actually lands in the right place. Yep. I right, don't want to grease up all this part too.
Okay, should actually see it in there. Now to get this back in, we're going to need to push that out of the way. I'm not sure if it shows up here. You can kind of see how it's sticking out. We will need to push that in when we go to shove this. We go to shove this valve in. All right. The usual. Make sure we don't want to fold that seal over. So, yeah. Okay. So now we're hitting that valve. But if I push it in, go past it. Now we're good. I could actually, like right here, we have not much pressure, so this is down. But as I pull it, you can feel the spring pressure of that valve. So somewhere here is hold up and down. This can't come back out. Unless you rotate it to the up position, then it'll slide out. Next up, we're going to install the rest of this control here. First piece would be this one. Want to put some lube on it. Probably got too much, but. Better not enough. Okay. Next up, we have this spring. Then a washer. And I'm, let's see. And I'm low on carter pins. I only had one. I thought I had a box of them probably do hidden somewhere. So for now, we're going to use that. Now the spring needs to be pulled back and engage a hole here. Oh, look at that. There goes my paint job. Okay. So we got down, hold, uh, raise. So raise it, hold, raise, hold, and then down. And this screw here is to adjust how fast it goes down. So if the implement is dropping too fast, you tighten this up and it won't go to the all the fully down position. Also, on it before, they had a washer and cotter pin here. But it seems like that spring holds it down pretty good. That was just... So 
this pin too big, the washer too thick. Yeah, that washer's too thick. So I'll tell you what, I won't do that in this video. I'll add that later. I'm going to get a thinner washer or a smaller cutter pin to hold this in place. But for right now, it's staying. So raise, hold, lower. All right, that's the linkage side of things. Also, there is a hole left here now. where we inserted the pressure relief valve and that's also the lower valve i'm going to use a little bit of thread sealant this is not a high pressure port by the way so so it shouldn't be too much of a problem just using this it's a tapered pipe thread anyway Since this one is a tapered pipe thread and I put sealing on it, I will tighten it down. All right. That's good to go. Okay, what's left? Not much. All we have left is the pump side of things. So we got our two pistons here, or plungers, depending on which book you're looking at. Make sure my brush didn't leave any hairs in there. Nope, looks good. So you have a big spring and a piston that goes in here. Now something to show you. The pistons, these are off the parts tractor. On mine, they had a pretty good amount of wear on the side. Also stayed up on top. Now these were right up up here also, but I cleaned them up. Basically what I did, I have a sander i chucked it into a drill and held a square up to where i made sure it was a square and sanded it smooth and then hit it with a wire wheel while it's spinning in the drill to get off all the little sanding marks it turned out pretty good way better than it was okay so spring in first A little more assembly lube. Get some of these grooves here. These will alternate and pump. All right, so next up, you know, I just realized I got ahead of myself. Can't put these in yet. I have to put the pickup in. Sort of fluid gets picked up and I can't put these in if the pistons are in the way. So let me put these somewhere where no dirt will stick to the grease that's on them. A little bit of thread sealant on here and make sure not to get it on the inside. Thread sealant's probably not 
totally necessary. This is probably fully submerged in oil, but just in case I don't want it sucking in air and pumping that into the hydraulic system. Here we go. Okay, now we can put the pistons in. I also cleaned up the surface here that pressed against the piston because it was chewed up kind of like that. There's also a washer that goes between these two. Well, I messed up. I am not at the right angle, so it's not going to go further down than that. So let's knock it back out. I'll use this old piston that I have no intention of ever using. Since it's handy. There we go. Try to get that washer in place. Drove the pin in too far, so I'm just trying to Tap it in, pass that pin, there we go. Probably should have used my brass hammer for this, but there doesn't seem to be mushrooming it out or anything. And there's these two clips. No washers on the outside. All right. So the lobes on the PTO will alternate and run this. That's pretty much it. Do a little touch-up paint on the bolts I have there and 
Should be ready to go. on here to keep it from rusting before I wrap it all up. All right, now that stuff is starting to come together, these videos are getting a little more fun. I don't know, teardown videos are pretty fun too, just seeing what's a it's like a mystery. You don't know what you're going to find. Sometimes it's heartbreaking, though. Little update on some other stuff. This weekend, I got the block cleaned and primed. Transmission case is cleaned and primed, so we're going to start putting together some videos on those pretty soon here. I just got to get them painted first. Got a Reliance engine kit, box full of goodies. Just waiting. Diff boot, seals, every seal in the tractor. It's a gasket set, but it's already out. Some bearings, some valve seals. Here's a cam install, a cam bearing installer I made. We'll get to try that out after I get the block painted. Stay tuned. 